Well, may God richly bless your study of his word today. As we continue our study of the book of Esther in this series that I've entitled For Such a Time as This, I want to consider the topic Defining Moments. Our text today comes out of Esther chapter 4, verses 6 through 14. Join me now as we read this text together. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the city square in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened as well as the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay the royal treasury for the slaughter of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa ordering their destruction so that Hathak might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and command her to approach the king, implore his favor, and plead with him personally for her people. Hathak came and repeated Mordecai's response to Esther. Esther spoke to Hathak and commanded him to tell Mordecai, All the royal officials and the people of the royal provinces know that one law applies to every man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courtyard and who has not been summoned. The death penalty. Only if the king extends the gold scepter will that person live. I have not been summoned to appear before the king for the last 30 days. Esther's response was reported to Mordecai. Mordecai told the messenger to reply to Esther, Don't think that you will escape the fate of all the Jews simply because you are living in the king's palace. If you keep silent at this time, liberation and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place. But you and your father's house will be destroyed. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. You know, we're, we're talking about this idea of a defining moment. And when we consider the concept of a defining moment in time, we're, we're talking about a, a particular event or, or a time, a decision that occurs in an individual's life that uh, defines something significantly. The significance in this is such that the individual's life is essentially changed or transformed forever in one way or another. That event could be one of great success or total failure, maybe of great achievement or even total demise. Now, hopefully you can understand this concept, and perhaps you've been there before. Now, as we begin to take a deeper look into the scripture passage before us today, we find Queen Esther is faced with uh, what could become a very defining moment of her own. When she heard of Haman's plot and Mordecai's request for her to go to the king, of course, her immediate response was fear. As verse 11 reveals, Esther was concerned with Mordecai's request for her to go before the king. She told him that everyone knew there's a law that a person approaching the king without having him summon them risked being put to death. Apparently, from what the scripture tells us, Esther hadn't seen the king in some 30 days, perhaps after five years of marriage, his interest in her had waned. Uh, maybe he had a great deal of other things on his mind. We, we're not told why this 30-day span, but we, we understand that it's been a while since she'd been summoned before the king. And whatever the reason, Esther hadn't seen him in a month. And in response to Esther's fear, though, Mordecai shared what has become known as the the very best known verse in the whole book. He assured her that she wasn't even safe herself in the palace, and if she failed to act, while salvation would still come, it would come from somewhere else. And then he ends with this very pointed declaration that we all know so well, and, and the line from which we draw this series... He says to her, who knows? 
perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Now, Esther found herself in the throes of a very difficult situation requiring some kind of response on her part. How she would respond would perhaps become the most defining moment in her entire life. In fact, it would either way become a very defining moment because of the outcome. Would Esther align with God's people by standing up for their safety at the risk of her own death? Or would she go with the flow and continue trying to live under the radar? Mordecai warned her that either way, either way, she was facing a great risk. Of course, we find ourselves confronted with God's sovereignty here once again as we consider that perhaps he had placed Esther in the palace for such a time as this. <clears throat> At some point in all of our lives, we will find ourselves confronted with a situation, a choice, a decision, an action, a, a reaction that will perhaps bring about the most transforming moment of our entire lives. Perhaps this defining moment, as we're calling it, will restructure your path and, and perhaps the path of others. For the glory of God as he sovereignly guides and directs you as you learn to listen to him and to trust him. Be confident in him. Let me assure you that as you face defining moments in your life, some you're going to recognize them as you're experiencing them. But let me tell you, others are going to come along that are not going to be so evident at the very moment. But in retrospect, as you look back on your life at some point, you see how God's hand was working within you. Folks, let me assure you, God's hand is working in our lives. And the more we learn to trust him, the more we learn to be confident in his wisdom, in his guidance, in his sovereignty, in his providence, the more we're going to have these very defining moments in our lives as we walk the path that he has called us to walk. I want to encourage you to take some time today to reflect on some of the key defining moments in your own life. <clears throat> and as you do so, concentrate. Think about how God has worked through these things in order to fulfill his plan and to carry out his purpose in your life. Through this time of reflection, you will be both strengthened and you will be encouraged as you find yourself reminded how evident God has truly been in and through your life. Until next time.